Hey there, I'm Christy, I'm 10 years old, and I'm going to tell you this really embarrassing story that happened to me at school. I was five when my mum discovered that there was something wrong with me, and I had to do this surgery in my upper thigh. I was just a little kid, so I didn't know what was going on, and so I wasn't really scared. After the surgery, it was hard for me to sit down or to walk like I used to before, but that was okay because after a while I got used to it and started to learn how to adapt to my body changes. This year, right after the school year started, I had to do a second surgery in the same place again. The doctor warned me that I should be really careful with my leg, especially because this is a second and more serious surgery and that any small injuries would cause serious damage or severe bleeding. He recommended staying home this year and not going to school, but to be honest, I didn't feel like my body was reacting badly. Everything was normal. I walked normally, and when I sat down, it did hurt a bit, but it was completely bearable. So I decided after a week that I am going to school after all. Although I did notice that one thing that did change about me. The thing is, I started noticing that my reaction to everything that had to do with blood is really bad. I mean really bad. It would make me sick to my stomach and I might even faint, like if I see someone bleeding or feel that I might be bleeding. I'd feel really nauseous, even if it was just a really small amount of blood. It didn't really matter. Anything red that came out of anyone's body just made me feel out of it. I think it has to do with the fact that I remember my doctor saying that I should always be careful not to fall or lift something heavy or run because my stitches would open up and I would bleed really badly, causing my leg a serious damage and I would never be able to walk normally again. So I took every word he said seriously. As any regular 10-year-old child, all my classmates usually play during lunch break at school. Either the boys run after each other or the girls jump with a rope. And since I can't do all of this to take care of my leg, I would sit with my best friend Jessie, who was always kind to me and preferred hanging out with me than playing with the other kids. And we would talk about Caleb, this boy that I really like. Caleb is 12. He has this soft hair and brown eyes, and he is the teacher's favourite student. He is really smart, and he is always nice to me and helps me with homework sometimes. He is a really good friend. Anyway, what happened was that I was in the schoolyard at our usual lunch break, and I was just walking around with Jessie, thinking how we can convince her parents to let her come after school to my place so we could have a sleepover. We were talking, and then I noticed something really horrible. My pants were filled with blood. I looked at the back of my pants, and it was blood-soaked too. I was sure of what was happening. My stitches got open. I knew what was going to come. My face became pale, and I started to feel dizzy right away. Oh my gosh, my stitches got open. I'll never be able to walk again. I looked at Jessie, who wasn't paying attention to me at that moment, and I screamed. I was so traumatised that I didn't even notice that she was talking to my sister Amy. I started yelling, Jessie, call 911, I'm bleeding. And I fell on the ground, with my hands on my face all sweating like crazy. All the students surrounded me just to see what was happening. I saw Kalem was among them, confused. Jessie and Amy ran towards me. I was still yelling, I'm going to die, call an ambulance. Amy started to calm me down. She said not to worry and that everything will be fine. No, you don't understand. Tell mom I love her. I said, yelling and sobbing. She wanted to explain something to me, but I just couldn't hear anything anymore. I was at the very end of my consciousness when I heard her saying, Christy, it's just... But I couldn't hear the rest of the sentence, and I fainted right away. I woke up at the nurse room that was in my school. I guess my sister called my parents because once I woke up, I found them next to me, and I was surrounded by Jessie, Amy, and Caleb. They all started asking if I was okay, and I started crying and asked them to tell me the truth. I looked at my dad and asked him, Did the nurse say I was dying? No, honey, you're not dying. It's something else. Let your mother explain to you. My mother smiled and said, Honey, congratulations. You just had your period. You're a fully grown woman now, said Amy. My period? Wait, my stitches didn't get open? So all of this was just a period? 
Yes, you crazy. I tried to tell you before, but you fainted, Amy said. Oh my gosh. So all of this dramatic scene that I made was for nothing. How am I going to walk again in school without anyone laughing at me? I looked at Caleb, who was staring at me. Oh my. He saw everything. He will never look at me now, and he might even end our friendship. I asked everyone to leave me alone because I needed some time and space to rest and relax. I honestly wished I would just vanish. Just to disappear until this story was forgotten. I didn't want anyone to see me, so I skipped school and just hid in my room, hoping everyone would just forget everything that happened. On the sixth day of my absence from school, while doing absolutely nothing at home, I heard the doorbell ring. I opened it, and to my surprise, it was Caleb standing there, with a little red box in his hand. Here, I brought you a gift, he said. What is it? I asked. Open it, he answered. I opened it. It was a box filled with tampons and chocolate, and a little note that said, I'm glad you survived. Come back to school. The note made me smile, but I was still ashamed. Are you making fun of me? I said angrily. Why do you have to make everything such a big deal? I buy tampons for my sister all the time, he said. Just relax. Let's eat some chocolate and have a good time. Unless you keep reminding everyone of what happened by your reactions, no one will ever remember. His words did make sense to me, and I agreed with him. Then he went in, and we hung out together. He even told me that he always liked me. I couldn't be happier, and I was secretly so glad that this incident happened to me. He kept making jokes just to make me feel better, and told me to keep some tampons in my bag from now on to avoid these kinds of embarrassments. That made me laugh, and I felt much better. I went to school the next day, and it was really okay. No one seemed to be giving any attention to what happened, and me and Caleb were finally together. I learned not to dramatize everything, and of course, I always kept a tampon in my bag, just in case. <laughs>